What's up guys? This is the Honest Outlaw here and today we're going to be doing a pretty quick review I hope. First, what do I think of it? I'm not going to give you a full review because that's going to be coming later. One of my favorite guns of all time, so let's just leave it at that. There are some shortcomings to it however and I think that some upgrades, especially some upgrades that I've done in this pistol, have increased it to maybe my favorite polymer pistol of all time. First thing I did was I increased the uh, texture on the grip. Now I do that with everything. Literally every gun doesn't have enough texture. It's either stippled or it gets sandpaper grips. Simply because I like to wrench down on a pistol. I, I think it helps control the recoil a great deal along with your stance. But I think just really gripping down on it helps you hold it really, really well. I think it's nice for in the summer when it's uh, sweaty and hot outside. I think it's nice for the winter when you get all kinds of snow and stuff on it. I just think it's a great upgrade. Now, a lot of people talk down about talon grips. I've, said, I've heard a lot of tactical instructors, tactical instructors, talk down about talon grips, saying that they'll move or they'll do, you know, they'll, they'll slide off. Well, yeah, they will, but guess what? Just like escalators, once they stop working, they just turn into stairs. Once this thing comes off, it's not gonna jump off and bite you. It's just gonna be the regular pistol again, so why not enjoy the texture that you have while you have it? The other thing I wanna talk about with uh, talon grips really quick, is that you have to install them correctly. You put them on there, you make sure that they're fit absolutely correctly, and then you hit them with a heat gun or you hit them with your wife's blow dryer, which is what I do, and uh, they stay on there a little bit better. Now they are gonna slide around when it gets super hot or something like that a little bit, but no more than your hand would on the regular texture of the firearm. Now the second thing I did was I added these really awesome sights. This front here is a Trigicon with a gold ring around it, and the rear is just a blacked out serrated. I actually really like the one night sight with the blacked out rear, and I think that's because of my experience with competition shooting, where I shoot a blacked out rear with a fiber optic front. Not only that, but as far as uh, night shooting goes with night sights, I think one night sight is plenty. I actually don't even think as long as you have a weapon light, you really need night sights that much, but uh, one night sight really helps out with finding the pistol. Let's say it's on a nightstand or something like that. Uh, you can look for that glow and you can find that really easy. Also, the gold ring around it is a nice uh, high definition sight for the daytime. Now, I was looking for a Trigicon HD type sight for this and I ended up finding this and I like this a little bit better because it's thinner. Uh, one thing I don't like about the Ameriglows or the Trigicon HDs, sights that I really do like, don't get me wrong, even the, uh, even the True Glows here, is that the sight is very wide. Now, I know, I know they're doing that because you think you need to use them close quarters, but from my experience, you don't even really use sights close quarters. I would prefer a thinner front sight for better accuracy when I need to have that accuracy. And a uh, thinner front sight really does help me, especially at distance. I think these sights are right around... Uh, maybe 60 bucks for the front, 40 bucks for the rear. I can't really remember, but I got them from CZ Custom. I've had a couple of people ask me for them. I bought them separately. Another big investment that I put on it is the Enforce APLC. If you're gonna have a pistol light, this one so far, I've only had it for about a month now, but this one so far is my favorite, and it is a perfect fit, as you can see there, on the PO7. The PO7 is also the gun that I go out and uh, look for critters and stuff at night occasionally. If I bring a handgun, this is it. So this is the light I wanna bring. It's a natural fit. Another thing I did was I put in the Cajun Gunworks Pro Kit. Now normally I'm a CZ Custom guy, believe it or not, I've got a lot of CZ Custom products, but I figured I'd try Cajun Gunworks and, and see what's going on there. Now I heard about this trigger from uh, Steve Fisher from Sentinel Concepts. He was talking about his PO7, so I figured how bad could it be if Steve Fisher's running it? And I got it and I've been extremely impressed. Now I bought the kit myself, I didn't send it in to him. Uh, personally, if you're not very experienced with gunsmithing, I would recommend you send your gun into them. Uh, I've done a little bit of gunsmithing here or there, and I, it took me a couple hours to get the entire kit in, but it's not incredibly difficult. You just kind of have to know your way around a double action gun. Now, what comes with that kit, that kit is $224, by the way, on the Cajun Gunworks website, which I don't think is that big of a deal. You know, people are going to say, oh, well, that's half the price of the gun. Well, yeah, but in my opinion, it makes the gun shoot twice as well. There's no substitute for a great trigger, in my opinion, and this definitely delivers that without sacrificing any reliability. Now, it comes with a billet hammer, a different hammer, as you can see there. It comes with a short reset trigger kit, which comes with a whole bunch of little parts that change the reset of the trigger. So, I'll show you an example here. Fire. Now it's not gonna be as short as something like a PPQ or even the CCP07, but the trigger pull is incredibly nice and smooth. There really is no substitute for a nice single action trigger. 
Comes with a spring kit, uh, double action roller bearing, uh, sear springs, and a reduced power uh, music wire trigger return spring. Now, I had a mainspring and some other stuff uh, added onto that as well, and like I said, it really, really helps the double action trigger pull. The double action trigger pull of the PO7, in my opinion, is, uh, is not as good as something like the PO1 or the SPO1, but this really helps out with that. But I do like the Omega trigger from the PO7 a little bit more than I think I do the traditional triggers. It feels a little more like a 1911 at the point of break. It breaks almost kind of straight up as opposed to that extremely curved CZ75 trigger. So I Duracoated it. I think this is BCM Wolf Gray. And I think it turned out fantastic. Like I said, I had to put the trigger kit anyway, so it was gonna tear a bunch of parts out. So I figured why not strip the sights, strip all the controls, and just give it a really good, really good, nice coat of gray. And I think it turned out really awesome. I haven't seen any other gray PO7, so this thing is kind of one of a kind for me. There's obviously the uh, gray lowers, but definitely not this color and definitely not with the upper as well. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, share it also, that really helps me out. If you have a comment or question about any of these upgrades or want any more information, just leave a comment below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. Check you later.